Dunkirk, Britain's successful retreat from German-occupied Europe in World War II. Today, only few men survive to tell the horrific tale of what happened on that beach in northern France in 1940. Colin Ashford is one of them. At 100 years old, Colin was born in 1919 and begins his harrowing and brave story in the lead up to World War II. I think the feeling of most of us who were young men was that we were going to war to preserve our democratic freedom, which we enjoyed out to France with the first expeditionary force. The last position that my regiment occupied was in the 42nd Division. Two divisions to try and hold back two German armoured divisions equipped with tanks and armoured cars. All we had were rifles, rifles and bayonets, but there's one general, his name was never actually given, but he um, said that uh, you can only fight tanks with tanks. He said you can't expect men with a rifle and a bayonet and hand grenades to hold back two armoured divisions. When we gradually retreated into France and occupied a position along a canal and, and that was a, a, a little way um, at a small village called La Bise, which is near Armentiers. That was our last position. And I was in 42nd Division and there was the 48th, two divisions. Uh, Lord Gort, who was in, you know, command of the British forces, uh, he uh, uh, called them sacrifice divisions. We had to hold back, as long as we could, two German armoured divisions, tanks, equipped tanks, armoured cars, and we had to try and hold them back <laughs> with only rifles, bayonets and hand grenades as long as we could. And we did it for uh, practically 12 hours. 75% of my regiment were killed. Were killed. 75%. And, and the rest of us were, most of us were either wounded, badly shell-shocked, or, uh, 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 you know, injured in, in some way or other. So I was only 21 at the time. So just imagine the sight. In fact, I had a recent nightmare. I was out there behind the machine gun again. Uh, firing at troops, uh, trying to get across this canal. And we held that position until dark. And being wounded in my leg, I, I was, I, um, two of my NCOs of my section got me uh, onto a 1500 weight truck, along with some other wounded men, just lying on the truck. And we managed to break through the cordon of the German Panzer Division, two divisions, and, and we were driven all night. We managed to escape just in time. We got clear. Fortunately for me, some Brengon carriers, which are a track vehicle, held about six men, came along. And I said, I said, uh, 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 have you got room for one more? I said, I can't march, being wounded in my leg. They said, are you an infantryman? <laughs> I said, oh, yes. They said, oh, 
Well, would you then you can take the place of our gunner because he's been killed. So I, I stepped what they call into a dead man's shoes. And I was quite near the guns. I think that's where I got my, my shell shot from. Because a 25 pounder gun, it doesn't make a booming noise like a heavy howitzer. It, it's a sudden crack. And even today, as my wife used to say, if there's a sudden crack of thunder, I duck my head like that. But with the reaction, still, I would still do it today if I heard that noise. The Royal Engineers, which I wasn't in then, they cut the bridge in half with explosive to prevent German tanks getting across. It was a girder bridge, very wide, and what they done, they cut it in the middle with explosive the two spans had dropped like that. If you can imagine that, these were the opposite banks resting on the bed of the river. How I did it, I don't know, or how long it took. But I had to make my way down these girders, uh, 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 which were resting, until I could feel my feet, you know, n near the bottom of the river. I was up to my waist then, in icy cold water. How long it took, I have no idea. It must have been a long time. I had to gradually make my way then, uh, up these girders at this side, and onto level ground. Met a young soldier, an infantryman, and he'd been wounded in his leg. We helped each other along as best we could, supporting each other. And we'd only stumbled a few yards when I could feel the sand under my feet and smell the sea air. It was wonderful. Of course, I was soaked to the skin. And some of the men, of course, the non, what they call the non-combatant troops, had all been taken off the beaches then. And, and they dug pits to lie in to prevent them from the cold sea winds. We dropped into that. Absolutely, I was soaking and we were so cold, we put our arms round each other for warmth. And that's how we slept during the night. And of course, in the morning, we got down onto the beach, staggered down. Uh, and this was on the Belgian side, uh, not the French side, but the beaches are continuous. And, and I, 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 I lay there for two days and two nights before I was eventually picked up by a British destroyer, taken across the sea to Dover. The wonderful sight, see the white ships of Dover. Well, it was a wonderful feeling. I, I just, you know, you, you just couldn't believe it. To see those white, you knew you got back to safety. And I was taken all the way to Newport in South Wales. And that's where I met my wife. She was a student nurse at the hospital, and I was the first Dunkirk veteran to be taken into, into the hospital where she was. And after the, we became, during my respite period, which lasted for about uh, three months, uh, I got to know her quite well. And she's a very clever girl. We kept in touch all through the war, and after the war, we got, of course, we got married. I think all of, a lot of us, as young men, felt that we, that in those days, we were fighting to preserve 
our, our true democracy. And as you know, I, I was invited as a Dunkirk veteran to Prince Harry's tea party. He, he, he came up, he said, uh, and spoke to each of us, well, few uh, Dunkirk veterans. He said, remember, he said, you're Colin, I'm Harry. He said, I don't want any other, no, forget about titles. And we discussed the two world wars. And he said to me, uh, Prince Harry said, um, uh, he, said uh, he said, the point, what, point I, what I'd like to make to you, Colin, is he said, our fighting, you know, was different. We discussed the different tactics. Theirs was guerrilla war. Ours, of course, was direct fighting, wasn't it, with the German? But he said, uh, what you chaps went through, he said, was far worse than anything we encountered, even in guerrilla warfare. And he said, we're very proud of you. <laughs>